Hey neighbor, welcome back to ARTV. My name is John and today I'm reviewing the fourth album, Calm, by the Australian pop band Five Seconds of Summer. It's a bit of a self-titled record in a way, with each letter of Calm representing the members of the band. Callum, Ashton, Luke, Michael. Five Seconds of Summer have been pretty hot and cold through the years, and looking back to their pop-punk days and albums like Sounds Good, Feels Good, they had to evolve or else they would have died as a unit. There was only so much they could do with that style, and a lot of the songs from the early days have not aged well. I mean, sure, I could throw on She Looks So Perfect and dance around the living room in my American Apparel underwear, but do I really want to? Nah. Not unless I'm blackout drunk. Five songs do take a bit too much heat even though I do have my gripes with the band. They honestly seem like they're in it for the right reasons, at least at this point. And coming off of a pretty decent pop album, Youngblood, I was curious to see how they would expand their sound again. It is slightly outrageous that the lads have been hyping up another album since like a month or two after Youngblood dropped. Like, easier hit is the lead single less than a year later. I still think that one would have been better suited for Charlie Puth, you know, the guy who wrote the song, but outside of its piercing high note chorus, I've come to tolerate it just fine. Teeth was the industrial pop lethal weapon in disguise. That snuck up as the second single after being tied to the 13 Reasons Why Season 3 soundtrack. Ew. Ew to the show, that is, because it should have never gone past season one, but maybe that's just me. Now that we're braced for impact and ready to hear whatever fresh tracks they cooked up with their talented producer Andrew Watt, what did Five Seconds of Summer treat us with on Calm? Guitar-fueled music isn't expected from the Aussie group at this point, but it certainly does happen in the form of some slick pop rock on album four. I was impressed with how well they handled bringing in some authentic moments from Michael Clifford, while also snagging extra guitar parts from Tom Morello and The Edge from U2. Holy shit, those are some big names. In retrospect, Calm triumphs over Youngblood in almost every way. That album wasn't entirely forgettable or anything, it's just that some of the tracks stood out more than others and I really didn't come back to it much at all. I am glad that they stuck to Watt for more of the production as he was a part of some of the best songs on LP3 like Lie to Me, and here, there's an unrelenting catchiness that seems to make every song memorable. And for the most part, that's a good thing. Cheesy lyrics and cheap sounding vocal effects or else gang vocals can dip you out of the experience momentarily, but it's never a game over scenario that ruins the album's persistence. In fact, I think some of the problems that I had with it on my first few listens started to fall by the wayside as the charm bled through and outweighed a lot of the negatives. Variety is a big aspect I noticed while looping through this record. Five songs are able to serve up an incredible ace up the sleeve no shame early on, and that track feels like it could have dropped in the mid 2000s. There's definitely a modern touch to some aspects, but I like that it feels darker and allows the bass to groove and carry along with Luke's versatile voice that might just overall be the best the band have ever sounded. Industrial pop certainly applies to easier in a way, don't start thinking Nine Inch Nails or anything as much as they'd probably like for you to, but without a doubt, Teeth does have that edge to it that made it a consistent anchor in my playlist since it dropped last summer. There's almost a wicked smile sent out from the minimal verses before a live wire hook incinerates anything in its way. The squealing guitars from Rage Against the Machine's Tom Morello flare up for the final seconds, so overall, you're in for a pretty surprising song if you haven't given them a listen in a while. Weighing against the album, we do have to talk about some of the cheap tricks pulled in order to get the song stuck in your head. Lonely Heart is one of the worst cases of this plague, sounding like radio fodder that couldn't be bothered to have a personality, and not in the same way, which oddly hits like a Maroon 5 outtake that I could easily hear Adam Levine's voice on. I'd be lying if I said that the earworms didn't work. I can't stop cycling that one in my head, and I like the punchy percussion, drippy bass loop, and some of the vocal work in the verses, but that never-ending chorus makes me want to put my head inside a balloon and pop it so that my ringing ears will distract me from the nuisance of drink all day, never sleep, but not in the same way. These really are the worst case scenarios, and it's mostly brighter pastures from there, which kind of shocked me. I think I did myself a disservice by playing Calm in the background while I worked on other things the first few times, but when I got into my dedicated listens, I cleared these mental hurdles on a few of the songs I didn't even think I liked. Wildflower was one of them, filled to the brim with the spirit of the 80s and a cheerful personality to boot. It's sweet, I dig the guitars on this track, and even the backing vocals that give it an extra push. High won me over too, considering it made me cringe a bit at first, 
but it's kind of cute the more I think about it. Against a gentle acoustic and group vocals, we get a serenade about a relationship that is maybe already over, maybe it's about to be. When things do come to a close between two people, you want to be remembered fondly even if it didn't work out, and yeah, I'll admit that the I hope of you think of me high pause, I hope you think of me highly is almost eye roll worthy, but I'm going to argue for this being a pretty great swan song for Calm. On the opposite end of the album, we get off to a racing start with the gang vocal fueled Red Desert that really sets the album in motion quite well, picking up the tempo with some rolling drums and a sense of desperation that actually made it feel unique to Five Seconds of Summer. I could easily toss aside some of the cuts in between like the generic Old Me or Lover of Mine that just felt like a play at a safe move despite its solid vocal melody, which shout out to some of the vocals on this record even though they once again underutilized Michael's talents, but listening to the changing vocal melodies on No Shame or even Teeth they nailed it! One more to mention by name, that would be Thin White Lies. I love the snappy beats mixed with the melancholic lyrics that show Luke's retaliation to years of being lied to in a relationship. The slick guitar moments here are among the biggest highlights on the entire record, but those shouted, overly processed backing vocals, Thin White Lies! Oh, oh man, I, I really could have done without those. Five Sauce dialed it up a notch for an album that's at the very least memorable, and if I'm being kind, it's their best work to date. That still falls short of great territory, but this is a really good sign for the band. Calm by Five Seconds of Summer gets a 3.5 out of 5. You watched my review, so give me your thoughts on their new album in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, then please do me a massive favor, annihilate that like button and subscribe to my channel if you're new in town. My review of Youngblood is right here if you want to tap for that, or you can tap for another pop review at this card. Patreon and my other socials are in the description, and as always, I'll see you soon for more on ARTV.